Hey everyone, welcome back to Code in Motion. Today we're looking at leak code problem number 76, minimum window substring. This is a leak code hard, so don't feel bad if you're frustrated and can't figure it out and it's super difficult. Trust me, this happens to everyone. This really is a tricky problem and we're gonna break it down and make sure you understand it step by step. So let's take a look at the problem. Given two strings S and T of lengths M and N, return the minimum window substring of S such that every character in T is included in the window. If there is no such substring, return the empty string. So let's take a look at an example over here. We have this super long string S and we have T which is A, B, C. We want to find the minimum substring in S that contains all of the characters in T which is A, B, C. Note that one example could be this over here. A, D, O, B, E, C contains the letter A, B, and C but it's not the minimum substring. The minimum substring is B, A, and C, which is only length four, and that's why we return this back as the answer. So before we get started, since this is a leak code hard problem, it's pretty difficult to just solve this problem if you haven't seen other leak code problems in the past. So if you're unfamiliar with the sliding window technique, I highly recommend you solve leak code problem number three, longest substring without repeating characters. I have a video on this, and I also highly encourage you to solve leak code problem number 242, valid anagram. These problems will give you a lot of background context that is very useful for this problem. Before we get started with the actual solution to this problem, I want to talk about how you should think when you see hard problems like this. Where do you even start, right? So with this problem, there's a couple of things going on. We have a string S, we have a string T. We're trying to find the minimum substring such that S consists of all the characters from T. It's a lot going on, so let's break down the problem. The first question I wanna ask myself is, how am I supposed to traverse string S, right? And you'll realize in the problem, they use the word, the minimum substring. Usually if you see the word substring in an array or a string, and if you see the words minimum or maximum, you should start thinking about the sliding window pattern. Generally, you can iterate through the string or array in O of n squared, but the sliding window technique allows you to do this optimally in O of n and scanning the input array or string only once. And so a good example of this, if you guys are not familiar with the sliding window technique, is to look at leak code problem number three, the longest substring without repeating characters. Now I'll just give a brief overview now of the sliding window technique. And so in this case, we have two pointers, i and j. And the idea is to move the J pointer as far as we can to make our constraint true. The question we're asking ourselves every time we move J is, do I contain all the characters of T? In this case, it's A, B, C. And you'll notice that over here, uh, the substring between I and J, we do contain A, B, and C. And so now we'll start moving I closer to J in order to reduce or shrink the window to get a minimum substring. And once we move I, since we no longer have an A, we, we break the constraint. And so we have to move J again until we find an A. And this is the sliding window pattern. You move your J pointer as far as you can until you satisfy your problem. And then you move your I pointer closer to J to shrink the window and find the minimum answer. Okay, and that's how this works. As you've seen in the sliding window technique, at every iteration, we needed to know if the substring, if the current substring contained all of the characters of T. And so this question now becomes, if we have two strings, how do we compare them such that S1 contains all of the characters from S2? And we can do so by using a frequency count hash map of the letters of both strings, okay? And a good leak code problem to get used to this kind of pattern is to solve leak code number 242, a valid anagram. This will show you how you can use a frequency count hash map in order to determine if two strings have the same amount of characters. But for now, let's just go over a brief overview of how that would look like. So we have one string over there, B, A, Z, C, A, and then we have T in this case, which is A, B, C. We want to know if B, A, Z, C, A contains A, B, C. So the first step is we're gonna create a frequency map of the, the string T. We have one A, one B, and one C. The idea is then we iterate through all the letters of the string 
And for every letter that we find in the frequency hash map, we decrement the count. In this case, there is no Z, so we just ignore that. That's fine. We, we decremented B and A. Now we're up to C. We're going to decrement C. And now the hash map has all values of zero. If you have all values of zero, that means that for every character that we had in T, we now have them in our string as well. And it's okay to even have negative values in this case. For example, on the last A, if we decrement the hash map, we're going to have negative one in A. What does that mean? That means that the string we're looking at has one more A than we need. And that's fine, right? Because we still meet the criteria of having all the characters of T in our string. So now let's take a look at the main algorithm. We have a string T that we need to contain in a main string S, okay? And the first step is to create the frequency hash map of the string T. We have one A, one B, and one C. So we have three distinct characters in the frequency hash map, and that means the letters that we need to satisfy is three, right? We're gonna keep track of how many letters we satisfied in our sliding window. And now we need to initialize the sliding window. So let's add two pointers, I and J, and we're gonna move J as far as we can until we meet the condition that the current window contains all the characters from T. So we're gonna scan A, and we're gonna ask ourselves, is A inside of my frequency T? So is A in T, essentially? It is, so we need to decrement uh, the hash map value at A. So it's gonna go from one to zero. And then we're gonna see, is the value zero? If the value is zero at the hash map, that means that we just satisfied this letter, right? So we're gonna decrement the letters to satisfy from three to two. So we satisfied A, we saw an A, now we need to find a B and a C, right? And so now we're gonna move the J pointer along. Is D in my frequency table? No, it's not. D is not in T, so we move along. O is not in the frequency table, it's not in T, so we move along. Is B in my frequency table? It is, it's in T, so we decrement the value by one. It goes from one to zero. Now, since the value is zero, we just satisfied the letter B. We saw that the current substring has one B and we needed one B because T had one B. If T had two Bs, then B would get decremented from two to one. And in this case, we did not satisfy the letter B. However, when the value of the hash map goes to zero, that means we satisfied that letter. And so we decrement letters to satisfy from two to one. Now we go to the next element, which is E. Is E in my frequency table? No, it's not. So I simply move along. C. C is in my frequency table. We decrement the count from one to zero. And since it's zero, we need to decrement letters to satisfy. So letters to satisfy goes from one to zero. Now this is really important, right? We satisfied all the letters because letters to satisfy is zero. That means our current string has all the same characters as T. And so we finally found the solution and so I'm going to add that on top over there in blue. So update the result. And the current result is A-D-O-B-E-C. Okay. And then throughout the rest of the algorithm, we're going to try to see if we can find a smaller substring. Okay. But now what do we have to do? We have to shrink the window. We found a solution. Can we find an even better solution? So we need to move the I pointer. Okay. Let's shrink it. Now, before we move the I pointer, we need to increment back the value in the hash map. So notice I is that character A, is that letter A. If I move I now to D, we effectively lost A from our current substring. So we need to increment back the value at I in the hash map. So we need to increment uh, the value at A from zero to one, because we're gonna move I and give up that element. Now, the frequency at A is greater than zero, right? We went back up to one. So letters to satisfy is no longer zero. We have one more letter we need to satisfy because we don't have enough A's. So letters to satisfy goes to one. And now we move the I pointer along. So now you notice we're looking at the substring D O B E C. And in the frequency table, we only have a B and a C, which is true. We're missing an A because we shrank the window and letters to satisfy is one. We only need to satisfy an A. And what does that mean now? We need to move J until we find a new A to compensate for this loss. We scan O, O is not in our frequency table, so we move along. We scan D, 
D is not in the frequency table, we move along. E is not in the frequency table, we move along. And here's where it gets interesting. We scan a B, B is in the frequency table. So we're gonna decrement the value of B from zero to negative one. That means our substring has an extra B than we actually need. Okay, but should we update letters to satisfy? No, we only update letters to satisfy when we hit a zero. Because when we hit a zero, that means that we just satisfied a letter for the first time, okay? But if we go negative, that just means that we have an excess of the letter that's already satisfied. That's fine. It doesn't hurt us, but it also doesn't help us, right? We still need to satisfy the letter A, even though we have an extra B. And so we move J along, and we finally find an A. Is A in the hash map? It is. So we're going to decrement the value at A from 1 to 0. Now we hit zero. That means that we need to decrement letters to satisfy. We just satisfied a letter. Letters to satisfy is now zero, which means that I have an answer right now. My substring from I to J is a result. Are we going to take this result? No, because A, D, O, B, E, C is a smaller result, and we're interested in the minimum substring. Now we need to shrink the sliding window. We found a solution. Let's move I closer to J to shrink the window and find a smaller solution. Okay. So D is not in the frequency hash map, so we don't need to update anything, and we move on to O. Now we have to ask ourselves, though, every time we move I, is letters to satisfy still equal to zero? Because if it's not, then we can no longer move I, we have to move J again to find a new letter. But in this case, we still have zeros and negative values in our hash map, right? We still satisfy the letters A, B, and C, and so we could continue shrinking the window. So is O in our hash map? No, it's not, so we could shrink the window for free. Move I along. Now we have to ask ourselves again, is the letters to satisfy equal to zero? It is. So this, is, this substring is a result, but it's not the smallest result, so we don't care about it. Now, once again, we shrink the current window. In this case, B is in my hash map, so I need to increment the frequency of B from negative one to zero because I'm giving up a B now when I move I. Okay, now we're gonna ask ourselves, is letters to satisfy still equal to zero? Yes, because in our hash map, we still have all zeros, right? We still satisfied all three letters. We still have an A, a B, and a C in this current substring. Okay, so let's shrink the window. Continue shrinking the window. We don't have an E in the hash map, so we could take it for free. We just slide the window. Now we need to ask ourselves, is letters to satisfy still equal to zero? It is, so my current substring is a result. And now I wanna shrink the window again. C is in my hash map. So I'm gonna to have to increment the frequency of C as I give it up and move I along. In this case, it's one. Now, since we, we changed the number from zero to one, from zero to positive, now we need to increment letters to satisfy because I gave up a C and I'm no longer valid. We no longer have enough Cs to consider that letter satisfied. So I increment letters to satisfy from zero to one. And now I move the I pointer along. Now, we're no longer satisfied, right? This substring does not contain all the characters from T. So I'm gonna start moving J along again. Is N in the frequency table? No, it's not. So I move along again to C. Is C in the frequency table? It is. So we decrement the value at C. We move it back to zero. Since we hit zero again, that means we satisfy the letter C. So we update letters to satisfy from one to zero. Now we have a solution again, right? Letters to satisfy is zero. So let's try to shrink the window. So we move I along, D is not in the hash map, but letters to satisfy is still zero. So let's shrink the sliding window, move it along. Letters to satisfy is still zero, so we're valid. And now we actually have a current substring that's smaller than the result. So let's update the result to take the smaller substring. So now we're at E, B, A, and C, okay? Now we shrink the window again, okay? Now we're at B. Letters to satisfy is still equal to zero. I have an A, I have a B, and I have a C. So we could update our result. In this case, our result is smaller than the previous result. So update the result to B, A, and C. And now we need to shrink the window. Is B in the frequency table? It is, so we increment the value. Since it's now positive, we need to update letters to satisfy to be incremented by one. And now this is no longer a solution, right? We're done. So we move I along. And now we're done the algorithm, right? J, J goes off of the bounds of the string, and the minimum substring we found is B, A, and C. Now, what's the time and space complexity of this algorithm? This algorithm runs in O of n plus m time, 
O of N is the size of S. O of M is the size of T. We iterate through both of those strings exactly once. That's why it's O of N plus M. And the space complexity is O of M. We only create one hash map. That's the size of the length of the T string. All right, so let's code out the solution. The first thing we're going to do is initialize the frequency T hash map. So this is going to be a default dictionary of integer. And for every letter in T, we're going to increment uh, the frequency's value, right? So frequency T of letter plus equal one. Now we have the frequency T hash map. We should initialize the variables we need for the sliding window. So we need to keep track of the letters to satisfy. And this is going to be equal to the distinct characters we have which is um, the number of keys that we have in frequency t. And now we need to keep track of left and right pointers uh, in order to return our final response. So we didn't really see this in the animation. We kind of updated our result as we saw smaller and smaller windows. But in order to actually keep track of the substring to return, we need to keep track of the left and right pointers associated with the substring. So I'll initialize this to negative infinity. Uh, for left and infinity for right and you'll see shortly how we use this in the result the last thing we need is the i pointer to start our sliding window so we initialize that to zero and now we start the main iteration of the algorithm so for j and car in enumerate s so in python you can use the enumerate keyword to not only get the index but also the character associated with the string uh, so now i'm going to say if character is in frequency t so that means um, the character that we're seeing in S also existed in T. And so what do we need to do? We need to decrement uh, the frequency T at that character. So frequency T uh, at character minus equal one. But now we also need to check if the value is equal to zero, right? So frequency T at character is equal to zero. That means we just satisfied a letter. So letters to satisfy minus equal one, right? Now, after all of this, we need to check, is my current substring between i and j, is that a valid solution? So what does that mean? While letters to satisfy is equal to zero, that means we have a valid substring. And this is actually where we're going to use the left and right pointers to keep track of the minimum result. So if j minus i, which is the length of the current string, is less than right minus left, that means we found a solution that has a length less than the current solution. So we should update our solution, right? So left and right will simply become i and j. That's how we're gonna keep track of the left and right pointers to return back our final answer. Now, if the letter at i is in the hash map, what does that mean? If the letter at i is inside of frequency t, that means we need to increment the value at that letter. Right? Because we're going to slide i across to j and we're going to give up that letter. If we give up that letter, we increment um, the value in the hash map. And if the value, so if the frequency t at s of i is greater than zero, that means we no longer satisfy that letter, right? We gave up that letter and we need to increment the letters to satisfy. Okay, and now we simply just increment i because we're shrinking the window. Now we're done the algorithm, but there is one edge case we need to think about. It's possible that S does not contain T at all. And in this case, we just return back the empty string according to the problem statement. And so we have to return back the empty string if we never found a solution. So how do we know if we never found a solution? Well, that means right is equal to float infinity, right? So if right is equal to float infinity, that means that we never hit this portion of the code. And that means we never found a solution. Letters to satisfy was never zero. So return empty if right is equal to infinity, else we're gonna return the string going from left to right. But this is not gonna include the right pointer, it's exclusive. So we need to make this right plus one. And now let's run the algorithm and make sure that it succeeds. And it does. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in more content like this, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.